Welcome back. I'm Thomas. I am here with Allison, David, and Diamond, and we are continuing a Bard's Tale. Dungeons and Dragons 5th Edition. The team has arrived back to the city and, and is not immediately attacked. There is <clears throat> no nobody nobody immediately draws them into the intrigue. They're actually able to fairly subtly make their way into the city uh, and and sort of go about their business. We're, we have kicked into some downtime rules. Uh, your characters have a little time to develop. Uh, for purposes of, of, we'll see what it is you guys do, we'll kind of go month by month. How does that guy sound to you? We'll, or sound to you guys? We'll, uh, we'll, we'll chunk through, say, month number one. Stan. What do you do? Month number one. Let's see. Uh, so it, it, upon immediately returning, Stan, uh, do, do you want to go into down, just downtime or like what we do? If you, have, we if you have events that you would like to trigger, uh, I think I know what you're thinking. Yeah. So when, when Stan gets... Uh, his, who, he had been shoveling gems, by the way, at the Dragon's Ford, just like shoveling gems into a bag. Um, and, and he grabbed all the little pe the little crystals people. So he takes... Where would be the best? So he wants to sponsor the voice into the Delta Confederacy, which takes 60 Gs. Well, the 60 grand is to clean up the, the, the shadowy area, the shallows at the pit. That's what it takes to hallow the place, which is the major are you, are you, complaint. Are you telling me we're literally, throwing, we're literally throwing money <laughs> at a pit? Yes. I'm literally, I collected this money to throw it in a pit. Alright, excellent. So, I'm going to throw all these gems in a pit, and it's going to fix it. <laughs> well, first you have to give it to priests. That's the key that's the, that's what makes it culture. Uh, so, but, so, so yeah, who would who would I who would I do that? Who, what priest is that? Paylor Mor would be your best bet. Morden, the priests of Morden could do so. Who would you like to approach first? This is a little bit of a big deal. Yeah. Well, clearly Morden. Okay. The you are immediately kind of shuffled up to the high to the high priest of the temple in in Sartos Brent, uh, with whom you are acquainted. But you know, usually when you get called into his office, it's like we hear you ran up a tab again. <laughs> uh, so <laughs> you're on brew duty for a week. Uh, so. You you are called like you are led into the office and and someone else is meeting with him and he sees you like with a bag of gold hasn't seen you in a, in months and sees you with like duffel bags of gems and he just like looks if you'll pardon me uh, and kind of gives him a, di a dismissive gesture and guides you in Stan I I am happy to see you. I should also say Stan hasn't shaved <laughs> in a while, and so he's uncharacteristically fuzzy. A little, sh uh, little rough. So, I come, I come today as an instrument of justice for Moradin. And this is, and, and, and apparently this is part of the instrument of justice. And he, and he puts, he takes one of the bags of gems and puts it on the table. I need, we need to fix the voice. How do you propose that be done? He, he takes you very seriously with this amount of gems sitting between you and he. <laughs> Honey talks, baby. Right? There, there, there's, there's a great evil. It needs cleansing. It needs attention. And it needs more than just that those poor, those poor working people can bear. Even though they're, they're doing their damnedest. You we need mean to pull together. the criminal revolution that is currently in charge of the voice, right? Or, as it's rightly known, properly in Dwarven, the Tanamere district, right? 
That's what no. you need? I, I've, met the, I've met these people. They're good people. And they're not just criminals. They work in every district. They, they're, they're the servants. They're the working class. Why are we... I thought I thought Moradin stood for justice for all. I don't see I don't see much in the way of Moradin and leaving them to die. Well, give me. A... He shakes the bag of gems a little bit. <laughs> he is he is eyeballing them, them tight lipped and listening to your case. Mm hmm. Go on. So tell me what you're gonna do to fix this. And if you can't, I still have a I still have a donation for Morden because I'm a servant of Morden. But some of this is reserved for an act of for this for this act of, uh, of writing really writing this act of injustice. We know that the voice has petitioned the Temple District to hollow Tanermere's folly. Currently, they have not yet declined the offer. It may be impolite of us to jump their claim, as it were. Properly, this is a problem for the priests of Pelor. Mm. Morden's well, yeah. domain is not so directly included that we would feel comfortable jumping in front of them in line, you see. I see. You, but, you, you know me. I don't often, I don't often ca catch the subtleties of these, uh, of these, these machinations, but I, I, I trust Alvin, you. You are not matter. bound to such things. And, be, and that may be the key to untying this knot. Give me a persuasion check, by the way. I will give you advantage because of the fat stack of gems. You're just like, kadoo, 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 blam! Fat stack. He hasn't even asked me where I got it. It's funny how people don't ask you where you get the money. You're an honest man. If you weren't an honest man, if you weren't following the, the, the paladin code and the tenets of your way, if you had stolen this from a village, you literally would have been struck down. Like, you would you would no longer have your powers. <laughs> That's true. That's true. I so gotta, as long as he can tell that you're still a paladin, he's pretty sure you're legit. Uh, I, I got a 19. 19. Nice. Your paladin hood may be the key to untying this knot. You are not officially a member of the clergy proper as it's represented in the city. You don't have voting membership in the synod. However, you do have a special relationship with the Temple of Morden, which will allow you to contract us directly on your behalf independent of any request from the voice we can remain neutral on that matter and not acquiesce to their wishes politically that would be a minefield but if you Stan Smith personally contract via this justly gotten loot to the Temple of Moradin, we could perform the hallowing services they require. Okay, let's do it. Do you have a contract? The, uh, the janitor in the temple, the custodian, the, the, usually they, they just pick up a dwarven janitor off the, or dwarven beggar off the streets and say, hey, have, have, go sweep the halls for a, for a hot meal. One of those. 
uh, co- comes up and says, I uh, am the voice of the voice. And I am empowered at this moment to speak. <laughs> it's kind of funny. He just kind of leans on his mop. Really? I couldn't help but over here. I hope you don't mind. Moran's Hall's echo. The voice would not contest this solution. We find it the perfect solution to our problem, which is safety and security for the people who tend your floors, kind sir. The priest is a little... (laughs) And he looks at the gems. He looks at Stan... Will you accept his word? And, and Stan, not even really hearing him say, like, ask that question, just uh, addresses the, the janitor. It's like, well, I'm glad, uh, I wasn't expecting to, to see, to, to hear from you here, but it's, uh, it's good too. I didn't, there's only so many districts you want to carry around with duffel bags of gems, so you'll forgive me for not coming to you first with this matter. I, I, I wouldn't expect it. You did great, Stan. We really appreciate it. The voice owes you an amazing debt. How can we help? Just let us know. Drop in anytime. <coughs> you kind of like, cough, like spasms and coughs. <gasps> oh. Coal rot. Stan gives him a gem. Thanks. Very kind. Man, your polish your armor. Uh, not right now, but thank you. I'll be here the whole time. It'll be my honor. He goes back, like, around the corner, starts whistling and mopping the floor. The, 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 the priest is a little, a little... Yeah, I have heard and, and of then such Stan dealings with the mob. Stan looks at This is why you should treat your servants well. We we do our best, and we find good dwarven work for them to do, to earn their their sense of self. I know, I know. The, the Temple of Morden does well. I'm just saying, it's um. There, there's there's many reasons besides being a good pious man. I agree. And we promote such things. The problem, politically, Stan Smith, between you and I, was the generations-long relationship between Tanimir and all the lords of all the houses of all the districts and burgs of Sartosfraint. His family was good dwarven stock that became misguided. But good feelings go back a long way. The bad feelings only ever go forward. This may be generations to repair the breach, but this will go a long way, Stan. You will make enemies with this act of kindness in the Hall of Burgers. I hope you know that. Well, really the only thing I have is the Temple of Morden, and I can't take that. So, I think we're all right. Well, keep growing that beard. It'll take a little of the edge off. (laughs) Oh, this beauty's going. He, 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 he casts zone of truth does a little prayer of of uh, ritual binding between between uh, tradesmen you know dwarven uh, a dwarven prayer of please bless this trade and and 
basically lays out the number of hallow spells. He knows the presentation that they gave to the temple district. You know, he was there. Uh, he attended that conference. He didn't just send an underling. Um, so he, he, he gives you the breakdown of what this is going to cost. And the temple's going to make a, a very small percentage, uh, but a small percentage of a very large contract, essentially. So, and then he puts out his hand. Assuming, and I'll trust your word for now, that all the weights and measures are as you say they are, we can get started today. He puts out his hand. Stan, gra Stan grabs it, shakes it. All right. And then as you're, as, as you're shaking, uh, he, he finishes the prayer of blessing, of binding, and, uh, and do, does a little gesture over your hands. Then may Moradin bless this great undertaking. If you'll excuse me, Stan, I have a lot of work to do. Briefly, one more thing. Yeah. He, uh, he, he'll, he'll he takes off the other duffel bag of, of gems. He's like, this is also <laughs> the Temple of Moradin. And also in this bag, there are people in, in gems. I saved them from an evil dragon, which is also where I got them uh, all the gems. So I don't know what to do with them, but I didn't be, I, I didn't. I feel I could leave them there, so I'm going to you, give them to you. Give them to you for now, and 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 we'll. Uh, they've been in there a long time. I don't know if you know a couple more weeks is really going to matter. <laughs> he he pulls a few out and is just gotta catch them all. Stan, <laughs> come by tonight. I'm buying you drinks. I want to hear this whole story. <laughs> Yep, I'm gonna go start drinking now. <laughs> Take a shower first. Get some rest. You smell like the ass end of a desert. <laughs> right. <laughs> you smell like pork in a crock pot for four days on low. That's. <laughs> So just rancid. Right, you smell really human right now. Uh, Alright, so and then month one for you in the downtime stand, that's an event. I guess a little like one event a month maybe, you guys can muster up. Is there, are there any like, are you just carousing from that time forward? Drinking and making friends? <laughs> um, I haven't decided if you want to swap with somebody else okay. for a minute. Anybody want to go next? Any volunteers for Spotlight? Rochambeau you for it, David. Go ahead. Okay. My my first month is relatively simple. The first thing that Strana is doing is holding up somewhere, like getting a, a actual account of what she's got and writing the whole story down. Okay. Everything she knows, everything she remembers, all of the details, checking other facts, like, occasionally, like, hey, somebody send a messenger to this person. Like, if we don't have the earrings, then send a messenger. If we do have the earrings, it's like, hey, do you remember, like, how this went down or what was said here? So that there is a full and thorough account of this whole, not just the event of going into the desert, but, like, the, the Boronor story arc because she hasn't done that yet. <laughs> I can give you the technical manual version. I know, but I... So if... Um, Big fucking dragon. If I end up needing to ask Click Clack for more than, like, one or two things, that'll probably be an offer. And, like, yeah, let's, uh, like, we'll get together, hash out some details, and I'll go back to writing because it's also a story. And it's not right. a magnum opus, but it's a story that I need to write down. Right. You, you gotta know? sit down and do the crafting and composition and uh, just sit in a dark room with with music going and write. Yeah. Okay. So, um, crafting an epic, essentially. 
Yeah, the breaks from that are also writing, which is to say letters, uh, <coughs> okay. family, uh, people I haven't been talking to from the Bard College, because it's really only been, what, a couple of years? How long has it been since I left? Like About a year now. Maybe not even yeah. that long. This has been an exceptional year. So there's a like, what are you up to? What are you doing? You want to come visit me in the city and cause some trouble? Like, <laughs> come hey, hang out. You'll never I'm gonna believe. start some shit. I think you need to. In- I need think you need to meet some people here. Also, dragons. Holy shit! Stay away from dragons. Um, we can't even tell you the best part. Yeah. I. I assume Don't you're going to include Harridan at some point in this process, and he offers to to like uh, publish and serialize it, uh, pull strings with a publisher friend to get get it uh, immediately out there. Um, I there are parts of it that we don't necessarily want known that I need to have written down for us. Okay. So it'll be a like, this is my book. Here's you know, this is the book, here's the TV version. There are parts that your hand refuses to write and attempting to force it brings great pain. Yeah. I don't even mean that. I, I mean more like if we're writing it as a story that we're serializing, we ultimately ma- want to make the three of us look good. And so any so I want a true account, but yeah, uh. we can have a we can have a published account that isn't quite the true account, but does a good story. Sure, sure. I'll, I'll sex it up a little. Yeah. I'm, I totally trust Harridan to do that. As it Everybody turns out, that way. Yeah. For instance, I, f- I feel like all of Act 3 will be the snake party. Uh, there's going to be a lot of that. Uh, especially in the stage version. Hmm. Uh. But having that as a thing, and also it should generally raise all of our like, oh, you're that guy, you know. Yeah, yeah. If you if you when you put the story out there, it will raise your uh, overall awareness in the city. Keep in mind, it's really only like a week since the thing went down at the opera. You then just disappeared for a while, and yeah. <laughs> so and then like with Herod and like part of this has to be Boronor's not dead. He's still going to try to attack the city. So building that throughout it, building that throughout this serial so that when it comes to that realization, people feel compelled to, like, you know, All right. make him umbrage. Uh, <laughs> we will make it like a crafting check for purposes of time. And, right. uh, and uh, eventually it'll be a performance skill check versus essentially the social inertia of the city. Uh, so so that'll be that will take at least a month. We'll see how your rolls go. So while you're rolling that out, uh, why don't you give me four performance checks, Struana? Okay. Uh, click clack, what are you doing for a month? When the I don't know if it got on camera, when the dragon offered us a reward I asked for any uh, shed scales he, he didn't mind parting with. And I collected enough to make armor for me and Lovelace. The first thing I do after a deep cleaning of both of us and all my equipment. Right. She just goes out to the swamp and soaks in the mud for a while. Just, oh. Yeah. Sand gets right. in crevices, man. Sand uh, gets in places sand should never be. Af- after that, I go and find our brilliant armor maker friend and commission uh, first a suit of dragon hide armor for dragon skill armor for Lovelace, and then one for myself if there's material left over. This is truly exceptional. Quality. Blue, yes. huh? Quite the haul. How, uh... How much are you looking to spend on? I mean, do you want me to put any extra bells and whistles in? It just needs to be durable and not too constricting. 
I, I have my own bells and whistles already. <laughs> well, you're getting to be kind of a superstar for me, and I, uh, I don't want to put the least amount of effort into probably my, my most lucrative marketing asset, if you know what I mean. If you, want a monogram, uh, if you want to monogram it, I have no objection to that. Well, that's part of our arrangement. I'll think up something just right. A little, a little something to uh, accentuate your personality. Okay. Auto tinkers table. <laughs> the uh, standard discount will apply. I'll let you know if, uh, if there's going to be any strange costs. Okay. Here, Great. I, I hand him all my uh, obsessive measurements of the both of us so he doesn't have to actually <laughs> take any. Like, relative measurements and just everything. It's like a blueprint. Okay. He, uh, and, he, he starts organizing them immediately and, like, pulls an assistant off to one side. It's like, I need you to start gathering. I don't know. I don't know. Thank you. Hey, just keep doing what you're doing. You're making me look good. Fantastic. And then I go back and start tinkering. Okay, go back to crafting and repairing. Of, and you know what? I have a lot of gear to repair. That's probably the next of my. That's probably the rest of my first section is just. Okay. Fixing everything that broke in the desert. Right. And and knowing that you've been a little shell-shocked, you might look at the recuperation uh, downtime section. Like a week or two of just, like, goose fraba. Uh, <laughs> yeah. All right. Struona, how did your uh, performance rolls turn out? I typed them in because I hand-rolled them because my dice like me. So that is a... 28, Lovely. 25, 25, and 29. Uh, you get um, the true account portion done in the first month. You, you, you were clearly inspired through the whole thing. Awesome. Uh, let's see. Stan, did you have any roles to wrap up? For month one, uh, I I will I suppose help and so and we can do religious service as my okay as, uh, as my downtime rule. All right, to assist with uh, the temp Temple of Morden's efforts. Right. Okay. Healing duties, curing disease, keeping workers healthy, uh, that sort of thing. Okay. Uh, indeed, a great endeavor does commence. Uh, there's a mobilization of, I mean, there's various changes in the landscape that need to be done. So, you know, dwarves are going down with equipment to recarve well, the whole sides of the walls to, to more well attune itself out of the shadowy, uh, shadowy expanse. Uh, dwarves are having to escort clerics down to mobilize. Um, there's some initial friction in that first month stand, by the way. Uh, you, there, some of the, some of, some of the dwarven traffic and some of the voice traffic don't always get along really well. Um, there are, there are some hot spots. Yeah, it's a, it's a little tense. Uh, month two. Stan, this starts with an event based on what you just did. You are approached by the uh, knight, knight General of the Bastion, Daniela de Vries, Domino Lux. Or, Good day. Oh, no, it's... I'll look up her actual title. Uh, damn it. Nah. Anyway... <laughs> Uh, she's the Knight Commander in the Bastion. Uh, she runs 
the guard, the gauntlet, uh, and is also a priest. She visits you in the Temple of Morden. She is unannounced, by the way. Hello. Good day. <clears throat> what, what brings you to uh, this hallowed place? Well, I don't get out to the Cliffs of Sartos Freight nearly enough, or, or as much as I should, given the Bastion's close, close relationship with the dwarves. Mm. But today I came to talk to you. There has been, brought before the council, an order, well, a request to order an inquisition. Based on your Into findings and, and the immediate improvements we're working on, we agree that this threat must be driven from the city. And we think that you are exactly the person to do that. This has come what through much prayer. About? What threat are we talking about? There's There are many threats to the city. Clearly, the undead menace and ah. anything known to support its incursion into the city. Indeed. We, we defeated Bornor, but he's still he's still on my mind. He's he's not gone. He's just delayed. So I understand. But now I understand what you mean. Yes, you want you think I should lead the charge in this? I'm not quite sure how I would do that. I I don't. You would be given command of a company of guard. The gauntlet would work specifically with with the Church of Morden on this matter. You have been influential in bringing the cause thus far, and we see no reason not to support your efforts, officially. Unofficially? Well, unofficially, we've always been a fan. Well, thanks. Uh, I'm I'm amenable to this. I'm. I, I've been down in the pit before. I'm I'm not opposed to going again, especially if we can put an end to it. All right then. I hereby call you as Knight Inquisitor of the Delta Confederacy, with all the powers and office official. Uh, ranks, titles, and vestments included therein. She she hands you a book. It's got a symbol of Cuthbert on it. There are some rules you'll have to be aware of. Strict checks on the balance of power. This thing has happened. Sort of thing has happened before, and. We wouldn't want it to get out of hand. Yeah, I suppose. Giving somebody a title like that can go to their head. I'll read it. It's a rare occurrence and a great honor, and not usually given outside the priesthood of Cuthbert. But you're a rare man, Stan Smith. Well, thanks. She, I, I she gives you a salute. Personal call. And then, uh, with your permission, Knight Inquisitor, I'll take you take my leave. Unless you'd like to show me which of these casks is safe for me to drink out of. Absolutely. Let me show you my favorite vintage over here. All right. Uh, so that that was an event trigger. Uh, you've 
Uh, anything downtime wise, especially now with that, that you would like to do, Stan? I'm not sure how what that would fall under for downtime. Uh, there's one section that's working a job. Um, yeah, work. Right, gathering a team, getting to know the job, research also uh, of that giant book of things that you can and can't do now. Uh. Well, uh, action first, reading later. I'm going to go to... I'm going to do the work. Okay. Can I, make, uh, I would like to do a strength athletics check for that. That would more be like if you were building the Castle of the Inquisition. This is actually going to be a history check. Uh, you are mostly pushing paper and telling underlings what to do. <laughs> they hired the wrong guy if that was the kind of check they needed. <laughs> Ah, oh, but I got a nat 20, so Stan saves the day again. Awesome! Man, this is Stan's story this week. <laughs> <laughs> uh, uh, over the course of the month, you are able to root out several what you suspect are not so much saboteurs, but agents provocateur that, that are you aren't really able to track down a source yet, but... Uh, they didn't expect you to be this on top of it. Clearly, there were some people who thought they were going to be able to slip some things through the cracks of this Inquisition. Uh, just some, some, you know, there's a hint of corruption already in the Institution. But I brought down the hammer. <laughs> <laughs> Buck stops here. Bam! Um, wow, that's a good month. Uh, mo montage month to Struana. Hey, are we on month two now for me? Yeah. You got All right. your epic finished. I got I got the epic finished and took a deep breath. And uh, Chad, like, uh, I would like to start with a chat with Harridan, um about how that epic's gone over and where to start gathering, like, about the I want to have a home base. I want a tavern plan. Uh, he has begun to serialize the epic. He hasn't released it yet. Um, it, this month, he will he will start putting it out. Now you know. Now that he knows which bits need to be redacted. Oh, none of that yes. f comes into. To, that's we can't put that Chekhov's gun on the shelf. It never fires in Act Three. Uh, <laughs> uh, cleans up the story, makes it you know give, gives it. He's gonna, he's going to take an editor credit on it. Uh, it's going well after you've finished reading it. What do you think? I think that I want to set it down. Great. For a minute, you know? Well, if the tone and voice of chapter, of, of uh, chapter one is to your liking, I'll simply do the rest in the same. I would appreciate the opportunity to give a glance through on each one before public on each portion of the serial before publishing to ensure that um, redactions are a that edits are appropriate. Obviously, this is how these contracts work. You know this. Great. Um, but other than that, I'm I'm frankly not worried about it. I do need to tell you, between you and I, that all of this business with your right eye. It's going to get you into trouble. Why is that? Yeah. And like, wait, right eye. Like, touches it like, oh yeah, that's a thing. She hasn't been looking in mirrors much, you know? Right, she's in her sweats. It's, yeah, just uh, like, oh right. Why is that? You do know that pacts with interplanar beings are the basis of a case against a renegade, right? How would I know that, Thomas? How would I know that? 
<laughs> you, you might not. History. Like. To know the law. She can't possibly be the only warlock, like, in the city. You absolutely cannot let anyone in the library district, preferably even the city, know. And there's only a f- there's only one district in the city that isn't under the, the Accords of the Three Towers, and it is not the library. Well, do you recommend an eye patch? I, I assume he's talking about the, the voice. Um, do you recommend an eye patch, or is there something more aesthetically pleasing than that? Uh, there are there are various pieces of disguise, uh, eye films, you know, a nictitating membrane of a frog with a little paint. Uh, even as I understand, glass makers, if you're willing to make the, to take that risk, plenty of ways to fix the color, make it a little less obvious. But you must be very careful what magic you perform. And the only reason that we're having this conversation between you and I is because I've already invested a lot into you. And it would blow back deeply onto me if you were to be discovered dabbling like you do. It makes me better. Maybe that's the problem. Or maybe, as the mages, as the black mages say, it's because too much of that sort of thing starts to unravel reality. You just be careful. None of them give without taking something. But you are a great big grown-up dwarf, despite your constantly trimming waistline. I assume that's the finger of portent handling that? So... Thomas, it's worth stating that I haven't actually reconnected to the finger. I went ahead and did it with, like, everything oh. else that I'm attuned to, but I haven't reconnected with the finger yet. You, you Sorry, start to gain weight to again. Uh, yeah! You... <laughs> <laughs> right? Sorry. I meant to mention that when we were on break, that I, I am, like, I unattuned from it. I'm like, you know, maybe we need a break from each other for a minute, dude. <laughs> It's going to hurt so much when you put it back on, uh, turn it back on, though. <laughs> I know. I know. All right. So. Uh, she wanted uh, to go see other fingers. <laughs> no. <That's... laughs> this attunement just seems so one-sided. <laughs> Uh, and, and so, and then he basically like, so obviously none of that's going to make it into the serialized version. And I would really suggest that you take it out of the quote unquote true account. Yeah, I agree with that. If you walk much farther down that path, I'm not sure how much more I'll be able to help you. Just so you know, there, there's a deep risk. You've hunted a renegade already. You know what they send. Your friend Sangrid specializes in it. A note to mark which spells I have because they're warlock spells. Uh, bards are known to have weird flexibility. Just, you know. Yeah, but not the eldritch invocations. Can't do yeah. that in front of people. Unless I'm gonna die. Um, so I, I'm gonna take him up on his recommendation for a um, I think the film if I can get the film to work. Yeah. Um, but also she's going to start carrying an eye patch just okay. in case. Have you got proficiency in disguise kits? I don't. 
think I do. You could take your downtime this month learning a tool proficiency. Disguise kit. That would be probably a worthwhile thing to do. Any chance I can listen to, like, French tapes while I'm doing it? <laughs> uh, take a look at the gaining skills section. You might be able to do both within the span of a month. Because uh, okay. it, it would be the same section. It's learning a skill, learning a language, learning a craft, uh, a tool. So, <laughs> all right. Uh, month two, uh, click clack. Um, is my armor ready? It's going to be about another month. It's a big, it, it's a big job. I just, uh, that's completely fine. I just know, didn't know what the time frame was. Right. Usually, uh, usual ETA for his, his level of shop is going to be about 10 weeks for a job that big. Okay. Um... I I I want to do that that recovery thing, okay. but I'm I want to do it at the uh, the Druid Grove, and it's mostly for Lovelace. All right. Like I, I'm doing it too, but the focus is her. She's the one that almost died. She has a much shorter memory than you. Yeah. <laughs> and, and seems to get over it a lot faster than you do. Right, but I'm, I'm doing that parent thing where I'm projecting <laughs> my yeah. yeah. Like, oh no, she's she's still bothered by it, and the kid is like, no, I'm fine. What are <laughs> right. you talking about? You gave me a band-aid, you <laughs> kissed it better, can I go back out to play? Uh, yeah. Uh... Yeah, she'll, she'll let you get away with it for at least a few weeks of, of over-pampering. Uh, she, start, she starts I, to my, get a my, my, my recovery process is taking care of her. All right. You know? Well, and waiting for armor to be built. All right. Uh, so we'll, we'll do the recuperation rules. Do you want to do that the whole month? Or are you just chilling? Uh, until the armor's ready, I have nothing else to do, so yeah. Okay. I'm also just spending some quality time with her, because I haven't done that in a while. We've been fighting things and talking to bureaucrats. Right. You're just taking some me time. Mm hmm Taking off the earring. No emergencies. <laughs> Just me and my crab. As it should be. Mm-hmm. Well, I'm not sure where Strana uh, ran off to, but... Uh, <laughs> She's having downtime. I'm sure it was important. <laughs> uh, we, will, we will come back to her and roll on to month three. Which of you guys wants to, wants to start on that? Uh, I'll start. Um, did the work. Uh, and the religious service before, and now I'm going to do some carousing okay. if the work is done, which I presume at least for now it is. There, there will always be some to do, and, and honestly, if you don't do it, the state of the Inquisition may suffer. Ah, uh, dang. <laughs> Congratulations, Paladin, you earned a job. That's your reward for questing. All right, I guess I'll spend a month researching to figure out what I'm uh, supposed to be doing. Okay. Uh, if you are successful on this research role, you will like, gain advantage on all of your Inquisition work roles later. Wait. I do a lot of researching in the bar. Just, you know. Right. You got by on beginner's luck for the first month. Now it's time to read the manual. <laughs> uh, do I just do I roll a d twenty for that? Uh, research in this case will be a history check. 
history check? Yeah, okay. go ahead and make four of those. I believe. So I got four, 18, 18, natural 20. Okay. Oh, man. The first week, it is so boring. Oh, God. You, you put it down Why? and pick it up and put it down and pick it up and put it down and pick it up. Finally, you just, like, lock yourself in a room, hunker down in your armor like you're being defended from the book, and just, fine, and get it done. Uh, and by the end, though, you're out of the park. There's a, there's a month of you getting better at your job. Uh, uh, click Clack, Shuana, who wants to take their third month of downtime? You should let uh, Click Clack, you should start with it. I'm doing some math for mine. Math? Yep. <laughs> yeah. I, I'm looking at the downtime rules for skill learning, and I don't want it to take 250 days to learn how to use a disguise kit. That sounds like some bullshit, so. Um, armor ready yet? Not quite. Finishing touches. Oh, wait, this is month That's three. You did that in month one. About that was halfway the first through game. the month, you're gonna get you're gonna get a message from Hazard's shop. Um, which is good timing because uh, after our after our rec our recovery spa getaway thing, I think we're getting a bit antsy and go looking for uh, where around about the time we're wanting to get out and do something I think would be about when I would get the call that the armor's done okay so go get that okay you want to RP that uh yeah so okay. you show up at Hezrig shop uh, what, what time do you, what time do you go? You get the, you get the message, like, early afternoon. Um. Like, not a rush, but we would just then head over. Okay. Uh, you get there, and the shop is closed. Okay. There, there are a few workers out front. Actually, you recognize them. Like they're, they're kind of you know all just chit chatting and and you know having a smoke. They're lollygagging. It's the first time you've ever seen them like, actually, rest a little bit. Usually, is it has them moving. Is it normal for it to be closed right now? No. Nah. Boss uh, may not back for lunch yet. I actually wasn't asking in character, but okay. Um, wh where did he go? I was on lunch. Didn't see him leave. Kind of looks at the rest of the guys. You boys see anything? No? Yeah, sorry. You're, uh, uh, you're the blue dragon armor guy. Yeah, he was, he was excited to get you the thing today. Uh huh. Well, I mean, I know where it is. I uh, I don't have keys. Can I get it? Can I? I mean, I'm terrible at it. But can I insight this guy? Yeah. I really want you to have a nat twenty. Yeah. <laughs> Uh, oh, fantastic. 
He's my best friend. <laughs> God damn it. You had to say something, didn't you, Diamond? I... Settle, settle one? Yeah. Yeah. You know what? He seems a little shady. <laughs> it seems like he might be trying to mess with you. I don't know how to take that. Well, your character thinks he's a little shady. <laughs> Is he just a terrible liar? Or I'm reading a nice guy so poorly he looks like Hitler. <laughs> <laughs> ah, I'm going to try to track the uh, armor smith. Okay. Because I, I would do that either way. Oh, we don't know where he is? I'll find out where he is. Um. Yeah, I'll tell him you came by if, uh, if he comes back while you're gone. Th thank you. Um. Click clack, right? Yes. It's weird that he knows just... your name, says that niggling voice from the natural one in the back of your head. How does he know your name? <laughs> mm. It's so weird not playing a socially aware character. <laughs> right? I'm used to being the bard of the warlock. This is all we do. Uh huh. Um, right when people can lie to you. Yeah. Okay, how do I track somebody? It's been quite a while since this has come up. Survival. Ah. Which theoretically should be pretty high. Right. He is a humanoid, I believe. Minotaurs still count as humanoid or monstrosity, maybe. Oh, maybe right. Okay. God, what were my favorite enemies? That was on the other sheet, the one that I lost. Yay. No. I believe it was humanoid and monstrosity if you had to. I think it was just monstrosity if you had, hadn't gotten your second one yet. Uh, first roll was a 16, and it was the better one. Okay. So, by the way. Oh, sorry. Uh, six, sorry. The roll was a 16. The oh. result is a 23. All right, there is no sign of him, excuse me, no sign of him having left the shop. Uh, you, Lovelace doesn't get a whiff of him. You don't see any any hoof, hoof boot shaped tracks. Uh, there's no... No sign of a struggle. No. But the, but the shop is locked and they're hanging out outside. Yes. Is he watching me? Uh, no, not really. He's he's. It looks like he is enjoying getting paid hourly to smoke in the front door because boss is late for work. <sighs> Give me another insight check. <laughs> Did you do it again? No, that was a six. Oh. Total. Whew. But maybe he's just sneaky. I mean. Right. Sometimes you feel like you're being watched, but you don't ever catch him doing it. Um, they thought he left, but it doesn't sound like he left. That's enough just cause for me to, as a caring citizen, inquire. I'm going to pick the lock. I'm going to try the door, see if it's locked. Okay. <laughs> it is. Okay. That's happened to me before. Yeah. Or I locked the lock door. <laughs> uh, yeah, I picked the lock. Uh, give me a roll. That's I have, I'm proficient in thieves' tools. Okay. So that's proficiency and dexterity. Yes, double proficiency actually. Double proficiency. Yes. You have proficiency because you have the tools. Proficiency because you're proficient in the tools, and then your dex. Okay. Twenty-one. 
Okay. Uh, now I need you to make a constitution save. The the lock clicks, and, and the, the fellow takes a smoke out and is like, Oh, hang on just a second, mister. And you feel, boink, right, right into your knuckles. Uh, it'll be one point of damage. How does that constitution versus poison go? Uh, 14. Uh, you are paralyzed in front of the door. <laughs> and the worker's like, oh, 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 I'm so sorry. I, I wish I'd seen you sooner. I, I, you, that's, oh, yeah, no, boss, Hazard put, put kind of a, uh. Oil can, oil can. I, Goodness. I think he Quick keeps an antidote inside. I mean, I could go go take a look. Uh, hey, fellas, make, make sure nothing happens here. This guy's sponsored. He's, I mean, so, I'm so sorry. <laughs> uh, you will get another constitution check after one minute. Mm-hmm. Uh, I only have one level of rogue. <laughs> <laughs> Right, it's enough to, to know all the tools. It's not enough to think every time I pick a lock, I must search it for traps. Uh, <laughs> so see, I I thought of it, but he wouldn't have. Yep. You hear some rummaging back in the office, and then you hear, "Oh, oh, boss man, boss man, no!" And, and you hear you hear some yelling and banging and rummaging from in there, and, and he comes in, comes out with some blood on his hands. He's like, go, go get the guard and get a cleric. Oil can? I, oh, oh, I, click. I, the cleric's if, on the way. Cleric's on if, the way. Uh, if he's dead. average height, if, if he's average height, I'm about eye level because I'm constantly mounted. Yeah, he's, he's medium sized human. Yeah. Hedrick's dead. I can't react. <laughs> <laughs> Say something. Oh, I'm sorry. I, I, oh, God, what a mess. What a mess today has been. Oh, I, my paycheck's not coming until tomorrow. Oh, I'm never going to get paid. Oh, Hedrick. You start. He goes, like, off to the corner and just starts, like, sullenly thinking about what's happening. He looks a little shell-shocked, like he seems to have been on, on good terms with his boss. <laughs> a minute later, give me another constitution scene. <laughs> uh, Lovelace can still move around just fine, by the way. Yeah, but she's not smart enough to know what's happening yet. I thought she had like a six. She understands common, doesn't she? Oh yeah, you're right. I put her intelligence too low. That's right. Um, con. Where'd it go? There to go. Seventeen. That will do it. Okay. <laughs> the GM's thinking. Right. Oh, I was paralyzed for a second. Uh, yes. That will do it. Um, we, we move into the room, right. and I start to try to detective this shit. The back office is completely destroyed. Uh, there, there is blood on the walls, and at the, at the back of the wall, slumped over the crafts table, uh, with a trident and a net in his hand, is Hezrig. Uh, bleeding. Alive? Moving. Alive? Not breathing. Not, not breathing. breathing. You'd have to make a medicine check to be sure, but... Okay. Uh, oh, that's horrendous. Um, ten. Medicine? Yeah. No pulse, no breath. You know a bard seems, is pretty good at bringing little, things back stiff. to life. I, I, I'm gonna cast Greater Restoration anyway. Okay. No effect. No effect? You okay. know Bard that's pretty good at bringing things back to life. Well, within Ooh. a minute. Well, 
Not terrible at it. Well, but by the time you got here, it'd be too late. Right. Not true. So Not you will have. Some I have time. raised dead. You can do that within ten days. Oh, that spell. Ah, okay. Yeah. That's level different. it up. <laughs> yeah, yeah. Um. At the, at the risk of sounding disrespectful, do I see my armor anywhere? You do. You see lots of valuable things strewn about. You do definitely see your armor. I acquire my armor and then continue the investigation. Okay. Put it in the, in the crab pack. Yeah. Uh, give me some investigation rolls. There's a high number. Congratulations. Uh, 22. That's exceptional. I will tell you all about it right after this break. <laughs> uh, with, this is Game Breakers. I am Thomas. This is Allison Diamond and David. We are playing Dungeons & Dragons 5th Edition. Thanks for watching. Uh, have a good game. Welcome back. So, we are going to have a very brief wrap-up on, on this part of the episode. Uh, while Click Clack is making his very careful investigation checks, Struana, what are you up to? Um, so, according to the rules and uh, the, the, the math, it's going to take 190 days to learn the disguise kit. So it's going to be like this progressive learning over the next few months. Mm -hmm. In that interim, like, eye patch and purchasing something and, like, putting it, like, ask Harridan to put in the uh, the cereal, like, an eye injury. Okay. You know, something in there. Right. Make it necrotic. I Cover don't know it what. in the meantime, right? It's the, it's the eye where... <laughs> where uh, Boren or hit you when you popped across the door and got a critical smite to the face. That's yeah, the... that would <laughs> I would do it. <laughs> um, <laughs> in smite. the interim, I'm gonna I'm gonna start doing that schmoozing bit. All right. Start engaging with like Chalcedony and Jubal and like then you know keep getting down a little bit and up a little bit and sideways a little bit and just talk to people and hang out with people and start figuring out land propositions and building propositions and builders and there must be architect guilds and also actually pay Chalcedony that like fee for you, you know yep right the the guild the uh, guild of entertainers in the city yeah all right, pay your dues, do some carousing, try to gain some allies. Uh, there are some charisma persuasion roles involved in that. Uh, go ahead and give me those. Uh, I, I assume you're going to do great. What does a double proficiency look like in a skill? It is proficiency twice. So okay. charisma plus proficiency plus proficiency. Okay. So that'll end up actually end up being all right. Crazy cool. high. How many rolls do you want? Four. I'm sorry. Four. Okay. Twenty. Ooh, thirteen. Twenty-seven. Twenty-four. Nice. Okay. Uh, you you do indeed begin to gain uh, a little bit of fame, uh, some some contacts within the the owners of of the area. You know, looking for a suitable place that might be empty soon. Uh, generally, laying the groundwork for for what you hope will be your your big score, or at least a place that's going to be yours for a little while. Uh, let's see, Stan, did we handle your th month three? Yeah. All right. So click clack after your investigation rolls, which were what again? Um, 22. Thank you. 
Only my character remembers numbers, not me. Uh, between you and Lovelace, you are able to to reconstruct an amount of the combat. It was sudden and, and uh, completely unexpected. Uh, he he was mostly dead after the first shots. Uh, it looks like there were multiple attackers. Um, some of the wounds look like horn goring wounds that you've seen before in like bullfights and things uh it, he he fought back his weapons have some blood blood on them uh with a 22 you see there is uh a a little bit of what is when you rip the soft part off a feather, I forget off the top of my head what that bit's called, but but it looks like, you know, there are traces of feathers stuck to some of the blood. Um, Lovelace. Are forensic a thing in this world? That's your investigation skill. No, but I mean, like, as a science, is it an established thing in the world? The deeper you get into science, the less uh, <laughs> the less it's going to be. Just like it's going to start to get to to get done by magic instead because it's easier. Uh, like there, you may pioneer a path. I don't know, click clack, but uh, yeah, there. I mean, there are lots of investigation tools. Urban rangers, especially, do a lot of that. The guard would it benefit? Would it benefit me to take samples? Yeah. Uh, for magical investigation, that can also be used in like scrying and things. And... I, then yeah, I I take samples of blood and feathers and mud and whatnot. Okay. Lovelace also specifically reports that there is a smell of dead minotaur that is more dead than the dead minotaur that's here. Like, like there's there's a, a minotaur that's deader than this one that was here. Mm. It's like him, but more dead. Okay, yeah, I understand. Gross. Okay, that filled in some blanks. Noted. And that is the perfect place to the end for the night. Three months of downtime and a murder mystery. <laughs> All right. Thank you, everyone, for watching. It is your eyeballs that make this whole thing possible. I mean, we play D&D &D anyway, but I wouldn't be willing to edit it. Uh, my name is Thomas. <laughs> this is Allison Diamond and David, and we are playing Dungeons & Dragons 5th Edition. If you like what you see, hit the like button. If you want to see more, hit subscribe, and if you want to see it get better, we have a Patreon. Check it out. In the meantime, have a good game.